All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street School. As in the Washington Commanders have re-signed tackle Cornelius Lucas, and I am happy about that. We're going to talk about why. But, of course, taking a look at the entire roster and, like, looking forward to the regular season, are we done at tackle? We're going to explore the fact that maybe the Washington Commanders should trade up for tackle and why I feel like it's actually a strong possibility. Also, are we still potentially pursuing another free agent tackle to potentially be our starter with Candidus Lucas basically projected to be like our backup swing tackle? Are we potentially pursuing like an all pro like David Bakhtiari? We're going to talk about his positives and weaknesses and just do an overall breakdown of what is the plan at left tackle? Is Cornelius Lucas the final answer or do we need to look towards the draft and or free agency to fix that? Because we have a potential rookie franchise quarterback and heavy investment coming in and you better make sure his blind side is protected. So before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Stay tuned because I'm going to keep y'all updated on every little thing. Again, I'm doubling back to the FL about as soon, but I was already working on a whole nother video updating y'all on some of the visits that the commanders have coming in. You know we have top 30 visits, which means you only have 30 draftable players that you can bring all the way to the Ashburn facilities and have them work out for you and talk to them do like a, a, a longer version of what we do at the combine with like interviewing them having them run through plays and film and things like that so it's really important you clearly see who we're very interested in when you're bringing in only 30 guys you're limited to 30 and if you're one of those 30 it's clear that the commanders really like you so i'm gonna update y'all on some of those because we already have three guys that are confirmed coming in for visits for the commanders and then i'm also working on a mock draft with the updated picks after the sam Howell trade all kinds of stuff so stay tuned without further ado let's go and get to it man let's get it adam adam All right, so the Washington Commanders are re-signing offensive tackle Cornelius Lucas to a one-year deal. The one-year deal is worth up to $4 million, not bad at all. The 10-year vet has started 31 games for Washington the last four seasons. So when in doubt, you have a guy that can start. Do we want him to start? Is our plan and goal for him to start? Not necessarily, but if he has to start, we are at the very least in decent hands. And this will now be his fifth season with the Washington Commanders. He came in with Ron Rivera, like literally the same offseason that we hired Ron Rivera. Cornelius Lucas came right with him. And he's one of only four guys that have been re-signed from the 2023 roster by Adam Peters. But not even necessarily all of those guys are Ron Rivera guys, technically. Cornelius Lucas is. But remember, Jeremy Reeves and Jamison Crowder are technically Jay Gruden guys. But F.A. Obata and Cornelius Lucas are Rivera guys. So Rivera has two guys that will re-sign back to this Washington Commanders roster under Adam Peters, which is really interesting. But another theme that's continuing is that of the four guys that have been re-signed, three of them were undrafted and Jeremy Reeves, F.A. Obata, and now Cornelius Lucas. And then also with some of the signings that we made, Austin Eckler, undrafted. Michael Davis, undrafted. Frankie Louvu, undrafted. These guys just... I, th I think it's something in the fact that they had to work for every little bit of the NFL that they've gotten. They've had to work so hard for it. They've had to scratch, claw, through blood, sweat, and tears, everything. Had to literally earn and fight for every little bit of NFL that they've gotten. Every little penny that they've made in the NFL, they've had to fight for that. And I feel like there's just a certain mentality. There's a certain level of leadership that comes with that. A certain work ethic that comes with it. And, and so I, I love the fact that we're bringing a lot of these guys back. A lot of guys that have out performed their draft positioning i mean they went undrafted for a reason at the time a lot of people felt like these guys weren't that good and basically all of these guys had a chip on their shoulder like bet okay say less i'm gonna work i'm gonna show y'all that y'all were wrong and that's what all of those guys that i just named went out there and did and i'm very happy for all of those guys specifically Cornelius lucas like we're talking about in this video also shouts out to my boy resh manual because you already know he's gonna come in clutch with the did you know facts and things like that he said fun fact commander's offensive assistant andre coleman was a wide receivers coach at kansas state with newly re-signed defensive tackle cornelius lucas 
played there. So like a little mini reunion. Of course, shouts out the Resh Manual. And again, for those of y'all who may not know exactly how to spell it, it's R-E-S-H Manual, M-A-N u-e-l on twitter man i mean if you're not following him you're missing out because it's just the most random background information like that that i just i have no idea how he's doing it i really have no idea where he's getting it from but moving on of course this felt like a very obvious signing like to me it felt more like just a matter of time type of thing more so than if we were going to do it and more so felt like when especially after we cut charles leno and then we didn't attack left tackle aggressively in free agency we went very aggressive with a lot of different position groups but left tackle we kind of ignored i'm not gonna lie up to the point of like a couple of days ago we were ignoring corner and then out of nowhere we went ahead and signed two guys for that my boy noah my boy michael davis all of that but then left tackle we was just sitting there like okay because we already know we're going quarterback number two overall so even though that's arguably our biggest need right now well no as a matter of fact it is our biggest need then after quarterback you're looking like okay so what's the plan at left tackle right now because i'm not even too sure about right tackle with andrew wiley even though he played better towards the end of the last season especially like the second half i feel like a lot of people didn't necessarily notice it but he did play better he was terrible the first half, but the second half, he was pretty decent. And, like, if he has to start for you at right tackle, we're straight. But, I mean, I'm not even sure about right tackle, let alone, again, left tackle, where the only guy on roster, I guess, was, like, Trent Scott, I guess, maybe, until we just re-signed Cornelius Lucas. So there's definitely a certain floor there. I'm super happy about that. And, you know, a lot of people felt like he should have remained the starter after the way he played in that Falcons victory last year. And I didn't say Falcons game. I had to say Falcons victory because i gotta keep making sure i rub that in man so <laughs> but remember charles leno he had like a tragic event that took place so he wasn't even hurt but Cornelius Lucas had to step in and start a left tackle for us. And he played well enough to where a lot of Commanders fans were just like, hey, man, you might as well just go ahead and not fix what's not broken and just go ahead and keep Cornelius Lucas as the starter. I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but he is a solid left tackle. You could do way worse than Cornelius Lucas starting a left tackle for you. But you can also do better. We'll talk about that soon. Like, this is your safety net. Just in case the guy that you get in the draft just so happens to not be day one ready, or worst case scenario you don't end up getting a guy that you even like at all like that like because for me best case scenario is we get like a starting left tackle in the draft after taking quarterback number two overall more than likely even taking some of our picks to trade up into the first round somewhere to do so and then Cornelius Lucas is once again your backup swing tackle in case of emergency and injury or whatever he's very solid but I'm not sure about having him start all season like all 17 games I don't know about that shouts out to my boy at burgundy blog because he words it very well Cornelius Lucas isn't the answer but at least he shrinks the question I like the way he worded that basically like right now left tackle goes from all uppercase need to it's still one of our biggest needs but it's not like panic ring the alarm sound the alarm terrible right now honestly again outside of quarterback it's easily our biggest need like because but quarterback we already know that's getting handled at number two we don't exactly know the plan that left tackles just yet we know a piece of it Cornelius Lucas is a piece of the plan a piece of the solution he's not the entire plan he's not the entire solution at all but at the at worst right now we at least have a guy that can play if necessary but I don't think we should be hoping that Cornelius Lucas is our week one starter. It shouldn't be the plan. It should not be the goal. But does this potentially stop us from taking tackle and free agency? That's a great question because it definitely does not stop us from taking tackle in this upcoming draft. We're not even going to even acknowledge that thought. Like we're just going to go ahead and just ignore that possibility. We're going to talk about draft after we get through this free agent right here. And so speaking of free agent, if we did want to go with the free agent tackle, I feel like what makes the most sense is a high ceiling guy because you already have the safe floor, the safety net in Cornelius Lucas. And then you go for ceiling, you go for potentially elite with the next guy. If you do go left tackle and free agency again. So shouts out to Ian Rappaport because he reported as of yesterday, he tweeted when the Packers released all pro left tackle David Bakhtiari, there would I always sound I feel like I sound Caribbean when I say that Bakhtiari. 
there was some questions about what's next. My understanding, he is diligently rehabbing and is focused on returning to play this upcoming season, I'm told. He's taking it as it comes, but plans to play. So basically, David Bakhtiari is working on coming back. He's working on getting healthy and all of that type of stuff. And right now, he feels like he should be able to start for an NFL team somewhere. Now, whether anybody actually picks him up or not, you know, that's that remains to be seen. But we'll just have to see but when we're talking about when he does play, when he is healthy, and that's like a big, like, if big win, he is healthy. He is elite. Like, even last year, even though he only played 55 offensive snaps because injury prone, which we're going to talk about soon when we talk about his weaknesses. But right now, we're talking about his strengths. We're talking about his ceiling. We're talking about his potential, what he could be best case scenario. And when we're talking what he can be and what he's done consistently throughout his career is that he's been one of the best left tackles in all of football. He's been a multi all pro left tackle for a reason in a league that features Trent Williams and all of these elite left tackles out there. So many of them. David Bakhtiari has been an all pro for a reason. He's elite, especially when it comes to pass blocking. Again, even just last year, like last year, we're not talking about when he was in his prime, when he was fully healthy and things like that. We're talking about last year when he only played 55 offensive snaps, which of course is definitely a huge red flag against. Again, we're going to get to that. But when he was available just last year, not like uh, several years ago, he had an 89.9 .9 pass blocking grade from Pro Football Focus. And his 89.9 .9 pass block grade would have been first in the NFL last year if he played enough snaps to qualify. If he was healthy enough to continue playing, Pro Football Focus feels like he would have been the best pass blocking left tackle in all of the NFL. Because Tyron Smith would have been right behind him with an 89.3. Tristan Wirfs after that, Christian Derisaw, then Larry Mitoso, then Rashawn Slater, then Jordan Mailata, then Trent Williams. All of these elite left tackles, Lane Johnson, Teron Armstead, Jake Matthews, Bernard Rahman, Garrett Bowles, Taylor Decker. Like, we can keep going on. Panay Sewell, Cam Robinson, Morgan Moses, Ronnie Staley. All of these guys, man, every single left tackle that you can think of in the NFL or just tackle in general, David Bakhtiari is arguably a better pass blocker than all of those guys. Now, you can argue that a lot of those guys are more well-rounded. They're better run blockers on top of being elite pass blockers. But when it comes to pass blocking specifically, you don't really get better than David Bakhtiari when he's healthy. And again, I know he's injury prone. We're going to talk about that soon, but it's not like we're talking about a guy that like his best days are behind him and he can no longer do that even when healthy. No, when he's healthy, as of just last year, he was still arguably the best pass blocking tackle. He just did it in such a small sample size because th and just to go back, this is literally who he is like he's usually one of the best pass blocking tackles in the entire nfl when healthy if not the best because when you look at his overall just career grades from pass blocking 2022 87.8 2021 a down year a severely down year with a 72.7 before that 2021 his last season that he was mostly fully healthy until the severe injury that pretty much was like the snowball effect that has led to even further injuries since then but 2020 was the last time that he was like fully healthy before a severe injury he had a 91.6 pass blocking grade then even better than what would have been the best pass blocking grade last year that he had then an 89.1 the year before that 2018 93.6 2017 94.6 and 2016 94.3 we're talking about literally the best pass blocking tackle in all of football when healthy. And again, I want to emphasize that this is even as recent as last year. But the problem is, when is he available? And that takes me to my next point. Again, if you go back to 2020, when he was healthy all the way up to the point that he ended up suffering a ridiculous injury, he still, I believe, made it to the all pro then as well. But 2020, he played through 12 games, severe injury. And then 2021 only played in one game, still struggling with that injury, suffering more, I believe. Then 2022, he played in 11 games, but that's still not 17 games. And then last year, he only played in one game. But before that severe injury in 2020 where he played 12 games, he played in every game possible 2019, every game possible 2018, 12 games in 2017, and then every game possible in 2016, 14 games in 2015, and then every game possible before that 2014 and 2013. Like, other than this 
cascade of injuries since 2020, this guy was actually very durable. Like, basically, he's less available than even a guy like Tyron Smith as of these past three seasons. But overall, over the course of their careers, David Bakhtari has definitely been the more durable guy. He's just had a really bad past three years of availability. Whereas Tyron Smith's availability issues date all the way back to 2016. This guy, David Bakhtari, is just as of like almost towards the end of the 2020 season since then, it's been fairly ugly for him. But I'm telling you, man, if you can somehow get him back to his 2020 self before the severe injury that pretty much started this whole run of him being injury prone, then you have an all pro left tackle protecting, again, your biggest investment, your rookie quarterback that you're taking second overall. So now I'm looking at my guy, Tim McGrath. And I'm not saying that it's likely that we do end up getting David, but if we do, we're going to need Tim McGrath on the case. And this is going to be your biggest priority. Jeremy Chin officially becomes second in your list of guys that you need to figure out how to get them back fully healthy and how to keep them fully healthy. And if we were to sign David, that shows that they really trust a guy like Tim McGrath to take a guy that's been that severely injury prone since the end towards the end of the 2020 season and to like figure it out, find a way to keep him on the field. And just to let you know, I doubt this happens. But at this point, with the safety net of a Cornelius Lucas, David Bakhtari is the only notable left tackle available in free agency that even makes sense at this point. If you, if, I doubt we go with another tackle in free agency at this point. But if we do, David Bakhtari is the only answer, in my opinion. Because, again, you already have the safe floor in Cornelius Lucas, the win in doubt type of guy. What's the point of signing another win in doubt guy without a ceiling that doesn't play at a high level? You might as well shoot for the high level and especially on a potentially cheap heavily incentivized contract like how the jets got tyron smith because i know a lot of people saw the jets sign tyron smith to a 20 million dollar deal but i know a lot of people didn't actually pay attention to the fine print he's only technically making 6.5 million dollars guaranteed like he's only like a 6.5 million dollar cap hit basically and the other 13 and a half million dollars are all incentives and based on how many games he plays to me, honestly, with a contract like that as a possibility, if that's an option out there, then why not sign David Bakhtiari to that? We still lead the NFL in cap space, even though we've signed the most free agents in the NFL. It's absolutely insane. Why not sign David Bakhtiari to a contract like that? Yeah, he's been severely injury prone since the end of the 2020 season, but man, I, if you do get healthy David Bakhtiari, which is a big if, but if you do, that's a future Hall of Famer protecting your rookie quarterback. And I just feel like you can't measure that. I, I mean, that's just invaluable right there. You can't even really put a price tag on that. So we still have the money. And if you really do want to do that, there you go. You, I, you definitely have enough to give them potentially $6.5 million, maybe even less than that. He may go for even less than what Tyron Smith got. But now, of course, trading up into the first round of the draft is what looks like may have to happen like it that's what it probably takes to get in your starting left tackle because again i'm not assuming that Cornelius lucas is our starting left tackle going into the regular season i'm just not we have so many picks already it would basically just be a shame to not take like two or three of them to move up and get the guy that you love in the first round rather than taking the guy that you like early in the second round there's a huge difference between the guy that you love that you're drooling over that you could potentially get in the first round than the guy that you're just like yeah well we need tackle might as well take whoever's the best one of those i guess available in the second round like for, matter of fact let's break this up into two categories guys that you have to trade up for into the first round or guys that you that may be available in the second maybe big maybe so let's take a look at the first group of guys that you like there's no way you're getting them outside of the first round. No way. You have to trade up until the first, probably even the mid first to get them. Of course, you have like Joe Alt and Troy Fatanu, Talise Fawaga, and Olu Fashanu that are probably going even higher than what we're willing to probably trade up towards in the first round. Maybe Troy Fatanu slides a little bit, maybe into like the later first. But out of those guys that I just named, 
a lot of those guys probably are out of range even if we do trade up into the first because i doubt we trade up far enough into the first to even get those guys that's like a little sub category in this already are definitely going in the first round category and then outside of that you also have jc latham and my georgia bulldog amarius mims they're not making it out of the first round i'm telling you that now even as raw as amarius mims is even as injury prone he's been even going to the combine he got hurt while doing like participating in the combine and things like that he's not making it out of the first round i highly doubt it he has the highest ceiling of any tackle in his class it's it's a lot of ifs there there's a lot of red flags but he's the guy that if he does reach his potential he has the potential to be the best tackle in this class nobody else has just the god-given natural born ability of an amarius mims so that guy's not making it to the second round i don't care how raw he is or anything like that if you just turn on in my opinion the ohio state tape which was i believe his first start ever in college football you could argue like say out of any of these guys Olufashanu, Joe Alt, Troy Fatanu, Talese Fawaga, JC Latham, anybody and throw in Amarius Mims if you take either of those guys best game just take their one singular best game I would put Amarius Mims versus Ohio State up there as arguably the best if not the best I honestly feel like and again that's why I feel like he has one of the highest ceilings out of any tackle i've seen coming out of the draft in years but of course there's floor issues but with him being at a premium position maybe if amarius mims was like the amarius mims of safeties maybe if he was the like the amarius mims of receivers or maybe like a tight end i guess or something maybe a center maybe i can see him making it out of the first round with all of the red flags injury concerns lack of floor things like that but as a left tackle, I don't think he's making it out of the first round. And again, um, I'm pretty I feel like I've mentioned this before, but like I'm subscribed and 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 have a subscription to every Georgia media outlet, anything, any reporting possible. I'm all of them. On three, two, four, seven, my boy Brooks, Austin, Dogs Post, anywhere you can look. I'm there. I know all of the inside scoop with all of that because I'm just that passionate about my Georgia Bulldogs. And they do this thing where like I think like September, maybe even slightly before that, they like get a chance to get like they get like three or five of their players of their choosing, as in from the Georgia Bulldogs side, get to choose three or five of their own guys and ask scouts where do they potentially think that they're going to end up going in the draft and like Amarius Mims was immediate no doubt first rounder from what they heard from all NFL scouts at that point. Now of course he's been hurt since then again and all of that type of stuff but he's just too talented so i went on that whole tangent about amarius mims because my main point is even though a lot of people see a lot of red flags in him even he's not making it to the early second round that's my whole main point there jc latham i can see why people will have jc latham olu fashanu troy fatanu talise fawaga and joe all above amarius mims and that's why i feel like none of those guys i just named are making it to our second round pick at all even though it's very early they're still not making it so then let's go to the guys that may be available in the second round and this is a huge may like all caps may i'm not confident in any of these guys that i'm about to name to you making it that far it's just that the previous guys have almost no shot like i'm willing to put money on the line that none of those guys will be available in the second round these guys i wouldn't be surprised if all of these guys somehow end up going in the first round but they have a better chance of potentially being in the second round so you have like graham barton out of duke potentially you have a guy like tyler guyton from oklahoma you have jordan morgan from arizona maybe those guys are available in the second round and even though I do like their talent, I, I like those guys as potential starting left tackles, especially if you develop them the right way. But they're not the previous group of guys that I just gave you, in my opinion. And if, again... I think it's the difference between do you stay at number two and take a guy that you like or do you move up to number one to take the guy that you love? I think those are big differences right there, in my personal opinion. I think if you really love a guy, you got to do what you got to do to go get him. Point blank, period. Whichever guy you really, really rock with, package like a second and a third or it's like a second and a fourth. Do what you got to do and move up to get that guy. And I, because I feel like we could trade back up until the first round and still keep one of our second round picks. I think you literally just have to take like a second and a fourth and then you may be straight there. As a matter of fact, shouts out to Tan Top Podcast for pulling this up. In 2020, the Chargers traded their 37th overall pick and a 71st overall pick to move up to the new england patriots 23rd pick 
So yeah, you could take one of our seconds, not even both of them, and then I guess maybe one of our thirds, I guess. Or you could potentially move up all the way into the early 20s, but if you don't want to move up that far, maybe it could take like a second and a fourth to move up to somewhere like it maybe in the late 20s if you want to do that. So we have options, man. I I'm pretty sure we're going to do something to be aggressive at figuring out left tackle in the draft somewhere i highly doubt we just sit there with our second round pick that we currently have and take whoever they like rather than going attacking and getting who they love point blank period Cornelius lucas i love the signing it was necessary it made too much sense again i felt like it was more of a win than an if but still that's not the answer it's just one of the pieces to the answer Got to protect your heavy investment in a rookie franchise quarterback that you're drafting second overall. I like Cornelius Lucas, but I don't trust him enough to go out there and start 17 games for you. And even if you do sign a guy like David Bakhtiari, you still need to draft a tackle. So regardless, we need to do whatever we can to get a really good left tackle in this upcoming draft. Point blank, period. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time. I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. I promise I'm coming to y'all with so much content, man. I've just been happen to just be very busy these past couple of days where I haven't even been home much. So that's why I haven't been doing my usual two to three videos a day. But we're getting back to that. So today I'm knocking this one out now. Hopefully it's out by like 1 p.m. It's 12 p.m. now. And then I'm gonna immediately start working on another one. Hopefully that one's out by like 5, 6 p.m. We'll see. And then maybe I'll do like a late night one as well so make sure y'all stay tuned man because i'm not playing with y'all i'm not man we working on so much content make sure you stiff arm that like button make sure you subscribe make sure you stiff arm the bell next to the subscription button all of that and of course man i'm doing everything that i can to try to read and reply to as many comments as possible but again i've just been really busy these past few days so i really appreciate y'all staying patient with me again be on the lookout for more content of course let me know in the comment section i can't believe i almost went without saying this because i really do care like i want to know how y'all feel about this signing do you feel like we may potentially pursue a guy like a david bakhtiari or are you just like Cornelius lucas is solid we'll be all right with just him and then maybe we get a guy in the draft or are you like me where it's like we gotta trade up into the first round potentially to get the right guy how do you feel about this Cornelius lucas signing do you feel like it's the answer at left tackle potentially or are you like me and you feel like we still need to be exploring options in both free agency and the draft let me know all of that i really appreciate y'all man i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out